Hello Randolph, welcome to another episode of One Ring Randolph. You can see him back of me, we're at the Randolph Fire Department and I'm going to show you an ambulance today that's going to knock your socks off. It's well equipped and we've got a man inside I'm going to introduce you to who knows all about it, he knows how to explain it and he's anxious to do so. So without further ado, let's go in and meet this guy. Come with me. I'm dying to see who our co-host is going to be. They always assign an interesting guy. See him up the end of the hallway now. You, sir, are? Tom Benal. Tom Benal. Hello, how Ken. are you? How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for coming today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. What's your rank, if I may ask? Uh, I'm the fi uh, firefighter EMT paramedic. Firefighter fire EMT paramedic. Hold it, hold it. You're going too fast for me. Firefighter EMT paramedic. Correct. How long have you been here? I've been here seven and a half years. Okay, can we talk a little bit about your training? Absolutely. Okay, but let's go out and look at the instrument you're going to show me. Okay. That's That's going to fascinate everybody. All right, please. I'll follow you. Thank, thank you. you. This is uh, a very warm day, and I appreciate your... Is this off duty for you now? Uh, no, I'm on duty right now. Are you now. on duty? Okay. Yes. And this uh, is the new fire engine. Uh, actually, this is the new fire ambulance that we've got here new in New fire Randall. ambulance, right. Yep. And it's red. It's not white anymore. It is red. We have actually... Um, a law has been passed recently that allows fire departments to have red ambulances in, de in deference to the old white ambulances. Did they had to pass a law to do that? That's correct. Yeah. Is the ambulance any different than the old white ambulances? Um, this is more advanced technology-wise. It's um, more equipment friendly for us and in, in the uses that we have for it. It's a little larger than the other ambulance and it allows us to carry more equipment. Do me a favor, will you? I'm, sure. a, I'm a kid at heart when it comes to firefighters and fire engines. And, can you turn the lights on for me? Absolutely. Oh, God Absolutely. love you. God love you. This is great. This is great. It's a beautiful machine. Brand new? It is. Actually, we've had it now for about four months. Four months. Yep. Okay. And this is the seal of the town of Randolph. It is. I guess. And that's a beautiful seal against that red background. You know it? 1793. What's that noise okay. I hear? That's the air compressor for the... Uh, the ride system. Okay, all right. I'm going to have to start this, so I'm sorry about the noise. Okay, go ahead. Ah, oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. There's a lot of lights on it. Yeah, there really are. Holy mackerel, look at that. That's better than the 4th of July, you know it? Well, it wasn't afraid. I don't know if you noticed it. Uh, tell me something. Yes, sir. When you were a kid, did yes. you want to be a firefighter? I did, actually. Did you really? I did. It's something so I've always wanted to do. You, this is something you wanted to do, and you, you must be in your glory. I am. I'm very fortunate. I'm one of the few people in life that actually gets to do the job that they love to do. Wow. And yeah, we're fortunate to have you. Well, thank you. Absolutely. All right, Ken, I'm going to show you some of the uh, lighting operations. You know, you're interested in the lights. and Do you know how much in the glory I am now? you have any idea what a kid I am? You get to drive this later. <laughs> um, well, all of these lights here operate different um, emergency lights within the truck. Wow. This switch right here actually powers down the light systematically so there's not a large drain on the electrical system. Okay. Uh, and right. turns it up. The primary, secondary is, is most of the red lights around the truck. The light bar switches the front lights on the top of it, and then we have some strobe lights to the front as well. Some strobe lights to the rear, which is additional lighting. Holy mackerel. A couple more that. red lights to the rear that flash. <clears throat> the Opticom isn't on right now because the truck's not in gear. If I was to put it in gear, there's a white strobe light in the middle, but it actually turns some of the traffic lights in town to green in the direction we're headed. No kidding. It turns it red uh, in other directions. Oh. A Highland Ave. Um, and uh, Warren Street is one. You mean this little switch here will control the, 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 the street lights? The As we rhythm? approach it, correct. Isn't that something? Yep. What a great idea. It, it, it's safety, you know? Yeah. When we approach yeah. it, it turns the lights red in the opposite direction. Now, so. when you're out of Randolph, though, that doesn't work in Brockton or Avon. Actually, some towns it does. Oh. Weymouth by the South Shore Plaza, it works. Is that right? Yep. And it allows us to get through traffic a little so, more quickly. You see, you folks sitting at home, you didn't know all this. If it wasn't for Ken Simmons, you wouldn't have all this sitting in your brains. Hey, that's fantastic, Tom. I think that's incredible. Uh, okay, what's... And these bottom switches, the left floods are the white lights on the side of the truck. So if we pull up to an auto wax in the middle of the night or someone who's been hit by a car, yeah. we can put light right onto the scene. Oh, what a great idea. What uh, a great rear idea. lights, the right side. This is the anti-theft device that we have in the truck. We can turn that switch, take the keys, the truck remains running. Oh, for God's sake. If uh, someone attempted to step on the brake or take it out of gear, the truck would stall. 
Oh, that's great. You mean somebody who's trying to steal this? It's happened. Oh, boy. Um, and then some dimmer, um, a backup alarm when we put it in reverse, which is also a neat little feature we have here. When we put this truck in reverse, there's a camera in the back oh, of the vehicle. Oh, Michael, hold it, hold it. I got to see that. Look at that. That shows you exactly what's in back of you. Right. Now, when we back up, we always use the mirrors. But if it was a congested area where there were pedestrians, we could put this down to make sure that someone hadn't wandered behind the vehicle. How close are we to the truck now? How close are we to the ambulance? You can see. Is uh, that part of the ambulance? That's the bumper right there. So if there, there was a little kid here, a little toddler, you'd see him? You would see him, yep. Oh, I think that is fantastic. Fantastic. So, and you can actually, even out of gear, you can uh, power it on and off. So if you want to... Just what a great idea. That should be in automobiles. Actually, in some of the cars nowadays it is. They do have that? Yes. Gee, what a great idea, because I'm always just afraid of a little kid in the back of me. That's the emergency brake that's right there that the, uh, the light flashes when that's on. And this red light uh, tells us when there's a cabinet door open. If we got some equipment out and it was left open, it would flash to let us know. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, we have two yeah. fire alarm radios here. The first is for Randolph Fire. Uh, and the second radio is a mutual aid radio. As you're aware, fire departments do a fair amount of mutual aid. So if we go to Holbrook, we can go up to the Holbrook Fire Department. And that now says Holbrook Fire Department. Yep, and we can talk directly to the Holbrook Fire Alarm while maintaining radio contact with the Randolph with Fire the Randolph Department. Fire. Now, Although we're assigned to their frequency, we can still listen to our if own you, If you're over helping Holbrook, and somebody gets hurt here in Randolph. Is there another backup ambulance? We have a second ambulance. We, we take a couple of firefighters off a piece of fire apparatus, and they respond in that ambulance. What's this thing in my face? Give it a pull. Really? Yeah, go ahead. I won't blow up, will I? No, you won't blow up. Oh, this is great. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you hear that? Holy mackerel. Do you people at home hear that? I did that. This is Ken Simmons talking to you from the Randolph Fire Department, and I did <laughs> for you. That's a little weak, though, wasn't it? Of course, it, it, I'm an old man. I think that's fantastic. Thank you so much. While you're making noise, you want to continue? Yeah. That's a siren. Give it a spin. Really? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, that's, that's a thrill, you know that? That's a it real is. thrill. But seriously, I think if people can see sitting at home, the safety that's incorporated right here in the cab. Just, we're going to go in the back and show you, God forbid you ever get sick, how well you're going to be taken care of. Have we seen everything we need to see in the cab? I think we have. Oh, I want to show you what's on the outside of this ambulance. I, I sometimes slip and call it a truck. It really is. It's an ambulance. What no, are you cool. doing here? What's that? What we're doing is we're plugging the vehicle in. This gives continual power to the battery, so when we need it, it'll start. Oh, so you're going to plug it in now? Yep. If, if you have a call now, you're going to have one heck of a long uh, wire to... Uh, I'm only kidding, of course. Yeah. They know at home that I'm only kidding, I hope. Yes. So this, this keeps it charged? It keeps it charged. Okay. When we get into the truck, we'll pull it out. But if we're to forget, it automatically ejects. Does it really? Yep. And the way we know it's charging is that the, uh, little, the little light up, light up, up on? top is... Uh, this this the amber light up there? Yes, that's okay. correct. All right. All right, that's great. Going around some of the cabinets, we'll start yep. off here. Look at these. these. These cabinets are almost unobtrusive. You almost don't see them. Right. Um, this particular uh, cabinet has a main in-house auction. That big tank right there. This one right here? Yep. Okay. Connects to the, the flow meters and the auction delivery devices inside the ambulance. So um, although we'll bring portable tanks into, you, into your home, that way we can plug them into the ambulance um, and save those tanks for, for where we don't have the big tank. Right, right. and I guess this is checked all the time. It is, to make checked sure it's daily. Full. Yeah. Um, and we change that tank when it gets to about 500 liters. That tank has about 2,000 liters uh, 2, 000, excuse me, 2,000 pounds per square inch. We'll change it when it gets down to about 500. Wow, gee. We also have uh, several small tanks. These here? Yep. yep. And when we carry the uh, oxygen bag into your home, these are the tanks we use, because obviously that tank is, is very heavy and we couldn't do is it. Is this heavy? It's actually not that bad. Is we this use, full? That's full right now, you can tell, because there's a strip around the top of it. Okay, yeah, that's really not that bad. That's new aluminum tanks. Some of the older metal tanks, and I'll let you judge which is worse. Uh, right. You people at home, well, close your eyes for a minute. Oh, that's not too bad. It's a lot heavier than that, though. It is, but then yeah. you have to add in the other equipment that goes in the bag. Yeah. The bandages, the regulator, the mass, and so forth. Okay, now... So we're trying to... Uh, stupid question, Tom. Never a stupid what, question. What, what, what do you fill this with? How do you... We don't fill it. Uh, we, we don't fill it with oxygen. These tanks have 100% oxygen in them. 
we have a vendor that comes in and fills our tanks for us. Ah, I see. Okay. All right. Now this particular contraption right here yes. is called the scoop stretcher. It's called the what? The scoop stretcher. Scoop stretcher. And what this does is if someone's on the floor that may have a broken hip, uh, instead of rolling them on the hip or their affected size, side, this stretcher, whoop, it's not going to do a good strap, but breaks right apart. Look at that. So, and I, I could take the bottom half apart if you'd like, but we can scoop someone right up and um, that way there's less movement and less pain, hopefully. Look at that. That's incredible. My mouth is hanging open. <laughs> Very seldom speechless. You know, again, you people sitting at home, this got to make you feel good. I mean, if somebody falls down and breaks a hip, a child, or maybe an elderly person. I've never seen one of those. Is this kind of new? No, actually, this has been on the ambulance for years. Really? Yep. The other thing we have on all the inside doors is a red light because the power's been shut off on the ambulance. I could turn it on if you like. This will flash when the door is open. So if we're on the side of the road or... Um, sorry. If we're on the side of the road, that light is going to actually flash so people won't, you know, because the lights we can't see and this yeah. gives us a little more protection. Oh, that's great. That's Same thing great. with this cabinet right here. This is just additional equipment. Oh, right. do that. Um, and this is just some equipment. This is a, a leg splint we have here for fractured legs. Um, and that's what? That goes right around my leg? It goes right around your leg or your ankle. Uh, yeah. It has a leg like fracture. Yep. Jeez, it secures it very well. Oh, God, I can't believe it. This sometimes we'll use for uh, children, small children that have fallen and may have a head injury. Yeah. And what we do is we'll put them right in this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use a splint for this. We'll say this is a child. Okay. What we can do? Yeah. Wrap them right up. I'm not going to uncoil all this. And this makes them totally immobile? And this keeps them immobile if they would have a neck injury, head injury. And, uh, it's, it's much, much more... Uh, size compatible that's, for the that's, children. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. What can I say? Okay, hey. third set of doors. Third set of doors. These. Oh. And this is where we keep our structural firefighting equipment. And I noticed you already told me the red light behind every door. Yep. yep. That way we have extra visibility on the right. street. Right. And this is our our turnout gear. Oh, this is the firefighting this equipment. Is, yeah, wow. Why don't you try that on? Oh, boy. I don't know. It's kind of oh. heavy. Oh, you got to be kidding me. No. Nope. Sheep is Greek. I'm going to close this door just, okay. just for a second. Oh, I don't know if I can lift it up. Ah, 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 ah. I got it on. Okay, <laughs> they're telling me to come forward, folks. I don't know if I can walk. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is comfortable on a 93 degree day. A little warm, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. What, what, now this is so well insulated, right? It is, it protects so, us from, from the heat yeah. uh, of the fire. Yeah, holy mackerel. But that's not all we have to do. Holy if mackerel. If we go into a fire, we're gonna wear something else. I, I won't make you do this. <laughs> this is the air tanks we carry on into buildings. And I'm not gonna button the coat up. Holy mackerel. Let me, let me see, just see something for a minute. Sure. Oh, what does that weigh, Tom? Uh, probably about 25 or 30 pounds. And this weighs? Probably another 20, 25. Wow. Jeez. And I, I haven't even put the, the pants on. The oh. pants themselves are, are kind of encapsulated even further. Yeah, don't do that today. It's too hot to do that. I'm amazed. I've never had one of these on. And no. holy mackerel. Oh, yeah. Would you do me one favor? What's that? Let me put the Would hat you on? Put, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One size fits all? How about you wear the hat? Oh yeah, okay. Even better, huh? One size fits all? One si actually, there's a ratchet inside that will allow if you I to... If I got it right? Yep, that's perfect. All right, what do you people think of... You know what's gonna happen now? I'm gonna get calls from women all over the state. <laughs> I am sexy, huh? You're it. <laughs> I tell you, this is and, and the most uncomfortable thing I've ever had on in my life. Well, But it's a lifesaver. Wanna try lifting that? Yes, I do. <laughs> 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 that was great. Tom. That was good. Never had a firefighter's hat on in my life. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Oh, I can't wait to get this off. I was gonna say, let me take that coat for you. Ah. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go to uh, Anthony's Pier 4 wearing this and see if they'll check my coat. <laughs> <laughs>
Gee whiz, I can't believe you guys are whooping. This is unbelievable. It it's a 93 degree day, and if you had to fight a fire on top of all that, wow, you, you must no. pray for winter. Well, then, then there's the problems of the ice and the frozen hydrants and... Yeah, yeah. Spring, spring is the best. Let me ask you a question. This is gonna be sound stupid to yeah. you probably, but when you're not fighting fires, yes. or driving the ambulance, mm -hmm. what do you do? Just take out a kind of a comfortable chair and sit down and watch TV? I, I wish that were the case. Yeah, what uh, do you, what do you we do, do a fair amount of training here. Uh, firefighter training, EMS, EMT credit um, training, um, all the house duties, cut the grass. Yes. in the station. See, I know this. My, my son's a firefighter mm -hmm. in New Hampshire. And he says, you know, we do housework. You wouldn't believe all the cleaning we have to do, keep the equipment up. So I, I know what you're saying. I'm, you people sitting at home, I'm only kidding. These guys work their fannies off. They really do. Thank God for you, too. Oh, thank you. Thank yes, you very thank much. thank God for all of you. So, okay. Let's go around the other side. All right, I'm all ready. Right. I'm ready. We're going to save these doors for later on because uh, okay. that's getting into the ambulance. Okay. This is our... Uh, our cervical spinal immobilization cabinet. We've got a bunch of different stuff in here. This is a stair chair. And what this is for is patients that we have to uh, carry downstairs, we can do it that way. Um, obviously, and we'll, we'll look at the stretcher later on. The okay. stretcher is just impossible to carry at most stairways. Right. Um, with the new ambulance, we've got a couple of new stair chairs, and this is one of the newest on the market. That goes up, but more importantly, this comes out. What those tracks are right there is what we used to do before, is two guys would have to carry yeah. a patient down. Yeah. So if you had a two or three or three, 400 pound patient, yeah. two people trying to carry the stair, stair chair down with the patient on, plus any equipment you may have. What this now does, is you tilt back, those tracks go on the stairs. The stairs are under here. The stairs are under there. Yeah. And it glides right down. Isn't that something? It's great on stri uh, straight staircases, but if you have a circular one or a one that curves around, you really can't use this particular chair on it. Right. That's why we have the old one as a backup. Right. But this, this allows us to take the weight off our backs and hopefully <laughs> on the stairs. It's incredible. Now, somebody's panicky. You've yep. got them strapped in, right? We have them so strapped in. So they can't in. fall off the chair. Correct. Yeah. And what we usually do, uh, so they don't reach out because if they reach out, they're going to throw us off balance. Because we ask them to hold on tight to the strap. And uh, they think they hold themselves in, and it, it ultimately makes it safe for them and us, oh, which geez. is the important thing. That, that, I've never seen one of those before. That's fantastic. And, and, and this is nice, actually, because it actually rolls like a wheelchair. Off wow. it goes. Wow. As well as, as well as a brake, so it doesn't go where you don't wow, want it to go. That's great. That's great. You say it's new, new to the market? Uh, it, it's new to the uh, to the department. It's relatively new to the, the EMS industry. Um, just the last year or two, those have come out. These are backboards. Okay. Okay. These are for yeah. people that have been in car accidents. Those put are these on. yeah. Those I'm familiar with. <laughs> Unfortunately, most people are. Yes. Yeah, All right. These are uh, pillow blocks that will pull the side people's heads when they've been in an accident. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. And then the collars are are up there. So that's what's in this cabinet here. That's a pretty good cabinet, I'll tell you. <laughs> it is. The cabinets up here, we've actually divided. Um, because this ambulance is an ALS and a BLS, advanced life support and a basic life support truck, we have to have different cabinets for, for the equipment. The top cabinet has our defibrillator, the semi-automatic defibrillator. You've seen a lot of those around the, uh, the town um, since we've become heart safe. And, um, this is the a more durable version than you see out and about. Yeah. Is this something that could be the homeowner could have? Actually, there is one out now that you can go online and buy one. Really? Yep. And what would what would something like that cost? Uh, you? I Not think this, but the $1, one. Fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars. But could be yep. worth every cent if you Absolutely. save a life with it. Um, Randolph is actually a heart safe community, and that was the designation done by the Department of Public Health and region, uh, the EMS region. Um, and that's because we have defibrillators everywhere. The police department has it in their units. We have it in all of our units. Uh, the school department has it in all the school buildings. Well, how uh, does this work? Is this that thing I see to put the clamps on here or the pads on yep, here? Yep, exactly. And they shock them? Yep. 
And all you do, I, I could teach you how to use this in like three hours. Could you, you really? Yep, you, you put the pads on, yeah. you, you turn on the power, yeah. push the analyze button, and it decides, the computer itself decides if, if it's gonna shock or not. Oh, I see. Yep. So it's really not up to you, it's up to the computer. It, in this particular machine, it's up to the computer. I'm gonna show you the, the paramedic uh, level defibrillator. Oh, and great. We actually read the rhythm and decide if we're gonna shock or not. Great, great. So, uh, but all of our apparatus, our command vehicles, our service units has defibrillated. So if they hear a call, they go and buy an address, they can stop and, and hopefully use it if need be. Can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Uh, EMS is emergency medical service, right? Correct. That's, for the, that's an umbrella for the whole thing. It is. What's EMT? An EMT is an emergency medical technician. An emergency medical technician is a, uh, a level of, of ambulance personnel um, that, that we call basic EMTs. But, um, it's splinting, backboarding, defibrillation, EpiPen. They give some medications such as aspirin, uh, assisted albuterol they do here in this town. Can so they give oxygen? Give oxygen, absolutely. Give a shot of heroin, I mean uh, uh, morphine. Uh. No, actually EMT basics can't do that. But there are additional levels, so they're EMT intermediates. And what they're able to do is do IVs and advanced airways. Let's see, I didn't know that. There's yep. different levels of EMT. Correct, and then the paramedic level they um, have EKG monitors, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, they're able to do IVs, put breathing tube down. They can put needles in your throat, needles in your chest. This uh, is paramedic. That's paramedic. That's almost Correct. like a doctor. It, it's not quite, but we work under a doctor's license through our medical director here. And we'll talk to a doctor directly on the radio and say, you know, I have this patient with these symptoms. May I give these medications? Okay, I see that on television, but you can actually talk to a doctor on your radio. Correct. Wow. We have a portable radio and a truck radio, and we have uh, medical control affiliation agreements wow. with, with hospitals that allow us to do that. And the paramedics are the ones that can give the, the, the pain medications and the heart drugs and so forth. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank oh, you very welcome. much. Yeah. Are you a paramedic? I am. I'm an okay. EMT paramedic. Correct. Okay. All right. This cabinet down right. here is just some of that uh, advanced life support stuff, and I think I'll show you that when we go inside the truck. This okay. is just an outside cabinet. Um, door. The, right. la the, the last cabinet, not too exciting, it's only batteries. Yeah. But we need those yeah. to start yeah. the truck, so. <laughs> that's a good place to stop on the outside, that's for sure. Those are big batteries. They are. How Is many it, you got in there? I believe there are three in the truck. Three? Wow. Yep. 12 volts? Yes. Yeah. All right. And you were in that door already. I was in there. I certainly was. I had All a good right. time in there. We're going in this way. Going inside. Turn some lights on in here. All right. Oh, Come right in and have a seat. Goodness gracious, isn't this beautiful? I mean, if you have to be sick, this is not a bad place to be sick, I guess. No, huh? actually, it's, it's one of the better places to be. Yeah. Is this locked down? That's locked down. That won't go anywhere. Okay. Um, God forbid the truck was to roll over, the stretcher would stay right here. Um, not that you can really see until I take it out, but there are, there's a bracket here that holds the stretcher in. This one here, right? Correct. Yeah. As you can see, the wheel is stretches underneath it. Yeah, yeah. It's mounted to the floor there. I see it here, yeah. And further back here, there's another bracket that holds it to that side. Well, I'll take your word for that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. This well, is this is the oxygen tank here. That's an oxygen bottle that yeah. when we have someone on the stretcher that we take into the hospital, we'll just hook the oxygen right up here. I see. Now, if you remember, one of the first cabinets I showed you was a big oxygen uh, tank. Yeah, yeah. Right over there is an oxygen inlet. All right. Right, right. here is another one. And here's another one. Okay, now we're going to slow down just a minute. This is an oxygen in here. A valve, yep. And a this flow is, meter. This is another one here. Correct. And the other one is? Right here. Over there. Yeah. Now, what this does is if, because sometimes we'll actually carry two patients in this ambulance at the same time. You will. We could have four or six or eight people hurt in a car wreck or, yeah. or something else yeah. where we don't, I mean, the town has two ambulances that we can conceivably use. Right. And then this mutual aid. Right. Um, so we can put two patients in, in, in the same ambulance, as long as they're both relatively minor. Critical patients, we wouldn't be able to do that. But if the patient on the bench needed oxygen, there's a valve right there. And if the second patient needs oxygen, they can either hook onto that valve or this valve right here. The advantage to that one is that if I'm trying to get around, I don't have to jump over the oxygen tube and right. it goes. Now, you could carry two patients here. One here? Correct. And one here? Correct. And they, these, they, they can lay down here? Yep. Yeah? Yep. And strapped in? Strapped in Safe? the seatbelts there. Yeah. Yep, always seatbelts on. Yeah. Yep. Wow. And possibly a third patient if we need, because 
Oh yeah. Oh, are you taking a nap on me? Yeah. No, this this is uh, this is the most uncomfortable thing I ever saw. <laughs> but I'm sure that well, you put a pillow under their head or something well, like that. Well, usually it. When we take two patients, mm -hmm. it's from a car accident. Yeah. So they would be on that backboard that I showed no, you earlier. If you wrote in a call, Tom, how many of you would there be? Just you and uh, another fellow in there? Well, in the ambulance, there tends to be two. Yeah. Uh, but anytime there's a medical emergency in Randolph, we dispatch an engine company as well. Oh, you uh, do? We do. And that's for manpower. Um, I'm going to show you the ALS equipment in a minute. Oh, I've got to stop you there. That's for manpower, you said? Correct. These are firefighters. These are not EMTs. They are EMTs. Today, uh, today I'm assigned to the ladder truck. Um, next week I'll be assigned to the ambulance. The following week I could be assigned to the, the dispatch center. The so, following to the ambulance. Uh, so the you, engine. you guys, uh, if you forgive the word guys, you, you guys are interchangeable. Yeah, we're cross-trained. We do both firefighting and, and EMS or EMT work. Oh, what a comforting thing that is to hear. So the, the EMT or paramedic that takes care of you on the ambulance today could be the, the, the fire engine that pulls up tomorrow. I see you've got a lot of towels here. Are you going swimming later or what, yeah. what is that? In today's weather we should, shouldn't yeah, we? Yeah, really. Um, actually that's just linen for patient care and to keep the strip, you know, obviously we change the sheets after every patient. You yeah. wouldn't want the same sheet on two or three patients yeah, before. Yeah, that's but, for sure, that's for sure, uh, yeah. We have those. Uh, who, those are sheets up there? Those are sheets yeah, for the dresses, see towels, okay. blankets, okay. and actually there's IV bags up there as well. All right. And uh, you've got a, uh, you, that's a car seat? Actually Did, this, this, this seat right here where we usually sit is a car seat. Obviously, children is very important for kids to be in car seats. Sure. Well, being in an ambulance is no different. So what this is is incorporated into the um, actual seat for the safety of the child. Yeah, that's incredible. Sometimes, you know, it's not safe for a two-month-old child to be on the, the um, stretcher if there was a collision, we'd have them in the car seat. Yeah. So that, that's the safest part of it. Now, some towns don't have EMTs. Correct. Paramedics, is that right? There is. That that is correct. Some um, towns only have first responders, um, which is basically a 16 to 24 hour first aid course. Right. Um, all the EMTs uh, in Randolph are, uh, excuse me, all the firefighters in Randolph are certified EMTs. Some are intermediates, and there are other others who are paramedics. How many hours do you have to put in to be a paramedic? A paramedic is about uh, a thousand hours of training. Thousand hours. Thousand hours of it starts off with um, school didactic classes, followed by clinical rotations. You do your ER, your OR. We put breathing tubes in. OB. You have to watch so many births. Coronary care, intensive care, psychiatric. So between the classroom and the actual clinical rotations, it can be a thousand, sometimes twelve hundred hours. And that's done after your duty hours. Correct. Um, On your own time. If you were hired as an EMT, we actually have, have our members go to paramedic school. Um, and that's done some hours when you work and because of, of scheduling, in some way you're off. But you, you do, whatever, whatever happens, you're devoting a lot of time because it must be homework. There's a lot of homework. Yeah, I There's imagine. a lot of energy. And, and then when you get back here, once you get the, the certification as a paramedic, we have our own training program for paramedics, a preceptor program. Um, right here in the Randolph? Right here within the Randolph Fire Department. That can last anywhere from six to eight weeks, as long as the, the, uh, the firefighter EMT paramedic makes the strides we need them to make to be able to take care of the patients effectively. And do you keep getting upgraded? Th there are a lot of upgrades. There's been a lot of changes um, within this town for medical advances, 12 lead electrocardiograms, where we can put all sorts of wires on you. It's the same electrocardiogram that the, the emergency room doctor and nurse does for you. Wow. We have capnography, which tells us a breathing tube is in by a device that measures the amount of carbon dioxide you exhale. Jeez. So those are all changes within the last two or Holy three years. Man. And the, the, the uh, assisted valve uterol program for the EMTs um, is a process where they can give medications to asthmatic patients. Okay, now you said assisted what? Albuterol. Albuterol. It's, it's, it's a, a nebulizer treatment. For Remember that some of these people watching aren't as smart as I am. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Albuterol, what's that, an inhaler? It's, it's a nebulized medication. Wait a minute, nebulized, what is that? Sounds like a venereal disease. <laughs> well, you put it into a, uh, a nebulizer acorn, which we have right here. This is? This is uh, what we call a nebulizer device. Right. And? Now what's can, in can you hold there that from actually there's nothing in it right now oh i see it's like a little mask here that's a rubber a rubber mask are no. you are you going to do something uh, we're going to do something for you ken all right 
<laughs> what do you open? That looks like a funny package. Uh, this is Delbuterol. And what we're going to do is we're going to hook it up to the portable tank here. And what we'll do, I'm now, putting... if I was to put this mask on you right now, yeah, this would just be oxygen. So putting this through here like this is just oxygen. Well, people who have asthma or COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, we can give them medication. And the EMTs can do this, like I said. So you squirt this in. And that medication, and because you don't have the condition, I can't let you. Yeah. But, as you can see, I can see smoke you can or see the mist. Yeah. And actually, the patient would breathe this in, and the, and the thought is that it opens up their lungs so they're able to breathe easier. Jesus, that's incredible. That's so, absolutely incredible. I had no idea you guys did all this. Yeah, all of our EMTs do this. Wow. Yeah. Some, wow. some services don't allow their EMTs to do this, but we've gone through additional training um, and affiliation agreements with our medical director to make sure we can. How many paramedics here? We currently have uh, 16 paramedics. 16? Within the service. Yep. Gee whiz. Um, some of them assigned. Um, to office's duties, so they don't necessarily ride the ambulance, but they are available to assist us. Oh boy, that's now. Whenever I see a call, I, I see an ambulance. Yeah, I'm turn sorry. that off so we don't make any noise. I see a, a, a like a little uh, SUV following it. What's that all about? Um, there are some services when they go into the hospital. Yep, there'll be an ambulance, and then in back of that, there'll be a uh, uh, an SUV. Some services have um, paramedics that come in Broncos or uh, the yeah, SUVs. Yeah, Bronco, right, right. Um, certain regional services, like the Norwood Hospital, for instance, they have a non-transporting paramedic unit where they cover 10 or 12 towns. Um, and that, those services will send um, the hospital paramedic unit to the town that needs it. We have those paramedics right here in this town. So when you call 911 and you need advanced life support or paramedic level care, hopefully it's going to arrive at your door. If, if, if the paramedics are on duty or, or the unit's available, we may have to use a backup ambulance that may not be, have paramedics, or we may have to call an out-of-town ambulance. Okay. Our uh, call volume continues to go up here uh, year yeah. after year yeah, after that's, year. That's too bad. Um, that's too bad. And with the advancement of care, I mean, before you take someone to the hospital and, and, and transfer them off, but, and I, I keep saying we'll kind of get to this gear, I promise, we will. Um, <laughs> a cardiac arrest, for instance. It involves cleaning equipment, going to the pharmacy, restocking the drugs, getting the defibrillator back together, getting the IV solution. So instead of being at the hospital for 10 or 15 minutes, you could actually be tied up for over an hour Ooh. just restocking and cleaning. Boy, because be you, you wouldn't want the, the dirty um, airway, roll, airway equipment going back in your throat. Uh, no, you know? I wouldn't. No, so of course not. Of course it, not. There's a lot of cleaning that we have to do and oh, takes a I lot could. of time. Well, man, do you carry drugs here? We, ca we carry drugs. and. Enough of saying I'll get to it. I'll just get to it. How's that? Let's get to it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, is this the defibrillator? This is the drug box. We'll oh. get to the drug box in a minute. How's that? Let's okay. get to the, okay. the defibrillator. Ooh, that looks like a man-sized piece of equipment. It's, it's heavy. Yeah. Um, this is an EKG defibrillator unit, and this does a lot of things. Um, you mind if I hook you up? I won't shock you, don't sure, worry. Go ahead and hook me up. Hook, hook me up. If my wife is listening or watching, it's okay, honey. They're not going to do anything. They wouldn't hurt me. Trust us. Would you? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put four electrodes on you. Two on your arms. Oh, they already hooked them up for us. How's that? Oh, good. And one in on each leg. Do I have to take my pants off? No, thank you. <laughs> Oh, you've got a nice touch, Tom. You know? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to put this right down here on your leg. Okay. How do you like this? You people sitting at home, he's touching the star. You know that, don't you? I'm, I'm on it. I'm kidding. I'm only kidding. <clears throat> All right. And there's your electric cardiogram right there. That's oh. what your heart's been doing. This is that. Now, incredible. let's take it a step further. We'll put this on your finger. What the machine is telling me is your heart rate is 65 beats per minute. Is that good or bad? That's fine. That's very good. Yeah. We're going to take your blood pressure. You're going to take my blood pressure, too. 
All on that machine? All on this machine. And actually, it does more than that. I haven't even started yet. Your oxygen saturation is 98%. Is that good? Which is excellent. Really? Yep. Um, and we'll kind of take your blood pressure. You kind of feel that get tight on your I arm do, at the I same feel time. It. Listen, I'm not going to owe you for a house call, am I? Uh, yeah, we're going to bill you. <laughs> um, what this machine does, on top of the electric cardiogram you see, it tells us your heart rate. It tells us your pulse oximeter. Now, the reason that signal has faded is because it's reduced the amount of blood beyond the blood pressure cuff. Oh. So when, you, when that comes down, that's going to start working again. Okay. It's going to tell us your blood pressure. But this machine does even more than that. I, I told you earlier, and I'm not going to undress you right here, but we can do the same electrocardiogram that the hospital does by attaching all these wires. Oh, yeah, I've had that done. I've yep. had that done, yeah. Um, and the other thing we can do... Oh, it's loosening up now. Yep, and you can tell because that signal's starting to come back. Right. Oh, that's my BP right there, 143 over 77. Your blood pressure is 143 over 77. It's normally around 117 or 118, but we have been working. We have, and it's hot. And it's hot. Yeah. Um, and again, um, this is an electronic device. We usually take um, our own blood pressure first, manually. Right. And then this is just for uh, uh, assistance and kind of continue monitoring. We can set that to go every five minutes. Gee, that's incredible. That's really, really incredible. The other upgrade that we had uh, not long ago, why not, right? Why not? <laughs> Is this going to be on me too? Yep. <laughs> Your bill just went up. How's that? <laughs> this is called an entitled CO2 detector. And this goes on your nose, just like that. I'm going to flip it right around there. Put that up. And you can see the piece that's right in front of your mouth. What this does is tell, tells us how much carbon dioxide you're exhaling. And why is that important? Well. It, it helps us, I mean, there are a lot of medical emergencies, congestive heart failure and asthma and COPD, and sometimes they present the same. By giving the wrong treatment, you can actually do some detriment to the patient. So this gives us a bunch of uh, additional information. Now, it tells me that your entitled CO2 is 40, or 39 actually, 40 is a norm, 35 to 45, so you're right there. And it tells me your respiratory rate is 18 to 20. Is that good? That's perfect. Oh. 12 to 20 is normal, so, you're, and of course, now, now that I say that, your respiratory, your, your breathing's gone up a little just yeah. to prove me wrong, yeah. right? <laughs> Good. But this machine is telling us four different pieces of information right now. You people at home, you see what I do for you? I go through this, this is a 93 degree day. I'm an old man. But I'm telling you, I think this is fantastic. To think that you can sit home, and God forbid you should ever need it, but it's here for you if you do need it. Is this expensive for somebody? Actually, the, the, this technology is expensive. This yeah. device right here goes for about $20,000, oh $22,000. Oh my goodness. Um, oh. But the advantage to it, and, and there's another device that plugs into that carbon dioxide, is when we put a breathing tube into someone's lungs, um, it allows us to get the same type of readings, hopefully. Usually someone who's in cardiac arrest, those readings won't be as high. I see. But with that documentation, on top of you know seeing the vocal cords as we pass it, listening to lung sounds, and listen over the belly to make sure that the, the, the breathing tube is in the lungs. Yeah, yeah. Um, this proves and gives us printed documentation Incredible. that the tube was in the right place. So, uh, if anyone ever questioned that the breathing tube wasn't where it was supposed to be, it's right there. It's right there on paper. And I can show you that now. I'm totally fascinated, Tom. Okay, it tells us today's date, July 20th. Yeah. Okay, 1537 hours, which right. is military time for 337. Right. right. Your heart rate was 61 when this is done. Your SpO2, oxygen saturation was 98%. Your entitled CO2 was 41, and it said your respiratory rate was 14 at that time. Oh my goodness, crazy. So th this is documentation that everything is um, the way oh. it should be, and the yeah. tube is where it needs to be, and you look uncomfortable. <laughs> you want to get unhooked? I, 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 well, you I, want to stay like that. We no. can carry this around all day. <laughs> no, no, I get unhooked, but I think I feel good that uh, I'm normal in so many ways because my wife keeps telling me I'm not a normal person. Uh, what, what do we got here, Tom? This is, uh, this is our drug box. Okay. This is our uh, advanced cardiac life support. Uh, what, what are you doing there? What is that? I, I need to uh, unlock the drug box. We need to keep this secure at all times. You keep it locked even though you might have an emergency? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a requirement by the state that we need to adhere by. So oh, it's one okay. of the things we do. I want to look at what you're doing. Okay. okay. 
we kid a lot about drugs, but they're very, very important in a lot of cases. So, they are, and yeah. most of the drugs we have are for advanced cardiac life support oh, okay. type uh, reasons. Okay. And uh, I could I could bore you with all of these drugs and what they do, and 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 what they're for. But I can tell you that most of these drugs, these drugs, all of those, 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 and these two are all for heart emergencies. Awful. I've heard of epinephrine on television. Epinephrine is a drug that we use uh, traditionally for uh, a cardiac arrest victim. Uh -huh. Um, a different dose we use for asthmatics or, or COPDs that have decompensated. We have nitroglycerin, don't worry, it won't blow up. <laughs> uh, for people with chest pain, we have aspirin, which is um, a common drug for, for heart Ill illnesses. Right. The albuterol is what we showed you with that mist uh, yeah, nebulizer yeah, earlier. Yeah. And atrovent is another one. Tibutylene, another bottle of nitroglycerin. I see them no. break the thing out of the people's noses. You got that here? No, we don't. We don't have those anymore. Um, they were uh, I'm trying to think of the name of them, but um, it's like smelling salt. We we don't carry that. We don't carry that. Okay. Nope. Mm -hmm. Again, lots of other medications: uh, the mag sulfate, the Benadryl for allergic reactions, narcotics, uh, overdoses is a Narcan, and that's the epinephrine that's for the other uh, emergencies. Again, all right. So, oh boy, oh boy. Lots of medications. <laughs> um, Totally self-contained. Yep. Totally yep. self-contained. I close this up and how, lock how this you, up. Let me just give you a, a hypothetical example. I'm yep. a diabetic. Okay. Okay. I don't wear a bracelet. Nothing to indicate to you that I'm a diabetic. Mm -hmm. But I'm unconscious. Yep. How do you know how to treat? Well, hopefully someone could tell us. Um, suppose nobody can. I'm. The I'm, I jog. I run four miles every day. Okay. And some, today? Even today? Even today. Yeah. At five o'clock in the morning. Okay. And I could pass out on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you, somebody calls the EMTs and they come. How do you analyze what's wrong with me? Well, with no indication on my neck or my wrist? Or... We start off by checking you out, doing your airway, breathing, circulation. Okay. Um, we check your vital signs. Okay. And then we'll try to figure out why, why is this gentleman unconscious? Yeah. And we'll probably start an IV. And then we'll go into the bag and get the glucometer. Ah. And what we're going to do just check your blood sugar. Is that a common thing now? Is it is. To do that? Okay. Um, okay. As a matter of fact. That's just the, the same one I got at home. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. The um, glucometer now, the EMTs the can actually use at this point. Now, my blood sugar is at three. Yep. What do you do? Well, we started the IV. We go back into our what drug IV? box here. Glucose? Uh, no, normal saline. Do you have any veins? Oh, yeah, you got veins right yeah. there. So They we, roll a little bit, but not bad. We'll get you. Don't okay. worry. Um, we check your blood sugar off it, and then when it comes back low, we'll go into the drug box, get out an, uh, an amps of D50, which I actually have one here. Dextrose. Ah, okay. And we'll put it right, right through the IV, and if all goes as planned, you'll be awake and talking two or three minutes later. I'll finish my run. And you, well, I went to, you go to the <laughs> hospital at that point. We've got to take you, but... <laughs> all right, that's, that's good to know. Yep. Should you should people with heart problems or diabetic problems or whatever problem, wear a bracelet they so you guys know what's wrong? It, it, we'll probably rule through what the problem is, um, but we'll, we'll figure be, it out. It would be quicker. It'd be quicker. Yeah. It'd be a little more beneficial to you. Let me, if you people at home, let me just say this for a second. Let me be serious for a minute. I had a very good friend who was a diabetic, and on a run, his blood sugar dropped way below zero. He was a goner before anybody could get to him. But the point is, he didn't have a bracelet on it that identify his problem. If you've got a problem like that, wear a bracelet because it helps these guys. And speed is important, right? Absolutely. The quicker they can ascertain what's wrong with you, the quicker they can help you. So do yourself a favor. Get yourself, they have, they have necklaces now too. So, and they're not bad looking. So do that. Okay, that's all. I'm not going to be serious anymore. Okay. Um, all right. Um, this is all of our portable equipment. This is. Um we have all this equipment inside. I can throw all of it with you if you'd like. But this is basically a smaller version of what it, of what, you, all these what I see around me here. There's a drawer down there I can show you that yep. has all these IV so, catheters. Everything that I see in here, yep. you've got mobile. You can take with you into the house. Correct. Smaller numbers. Smaller numbers. For right. instance, all of these breathing tubes right. that we put down in people's lungs won't fit in there. We may have one or two or three of each of those sizes. I gotcha. However, we have some here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, different devices, uh, additional airway maintenance 
tubes are up there. Over here is all of my airway stuff. You see me, our airway stuff, yeah. I should say. Yeah. Amble bags to help you breathe, suction equipment, uh, oxygen mask, nasal cannulas, the pediatric masks for, yeah. for children who may be having trouble breathing. Yeah. Down here is all of the um, bandaging stuff. Oh, those are bright lights. There's a lot of lights back here. Yeah, there's a lot of lights back here. That, that's one of the things that when we got the new ambulance, we had a lot of extra light back here yeah. for that reason. And you really need to see what you're doing. We do, yeah. um, especially during the nighttime. Obviously, it's daylight out right now, but it's far worse at night. Yeah. Let me ask you one question. Sure. This is a brand new ambulance. It is. What's the difference between, the main difference between this one and the old one? Basically, what? layout. Layout, okay. We have done custom cabinetry. Uh, we had a committee put together with several of the members and decide what well, we want this equipment here, that equipment there. Oh, that's great. Um, for instance, this drawer back here in the back of the, the ambulance. Yeah, I'm going to ask you about that. We, we set this up specific for the way we want, okay? I left it unlocked so we can get right into it. But this is all of our IV solutions. We talked about, uh, yeah, yeah. we mentioned about if you need an IV. Yeah. The catheters are subdivided, the administration sets, the tourniquets, the wow. uh, blood drawer equipment. Wow. That's the crazy. stuff that secures it. Now the advantage is, is if, if you were sitting starting the IV, you could reach right over and know where everything is. Oh, that's great. Now, that's great. What happened? Uh, the power shut off. Oh, no kidding. But I can turn some lights on. Hold you, on one second. You guys pay your bill and then what, you wouldn't have that problem. Well, the reason the power shuts down is that if, let's say, we left the lights on by accident. Yeah. We were at the hostel, all the lights were left on. We had to clean up, came out 40 minutes later to go to a call. Oh, yeah, forget Absolutely it. nothing. Yeah. So yeah. it's a safety mechanism that the truck will shut down after five Good minutes. idea, good idea. So this drawer um, is set up just the way we want it. Because what are those numbers on the front? Well, this is, this is a lock. Because this is a, uh, the paramedic advanced life support equipment, right. it has to be secured. And the way we properly secure it is by the, by the simplex lock system. Similar to the, the drawers up front where, where I showed you that the dextrose yeah. and where the advanced life support equipment is on the front of the truck, um, it's all secured according to the state regulation. Okay. The other advantage is we're in the uh, process of uh, getting ready to get a second ambulance to replace the, the older ambulance that we have. And our plan is to have the ambulances as identical as possible. So when I get into the ambulance for like a, a labor call, I can reach right over here. I know in that cabinet right there, the uh, OB kit's gonna be. And I know the binging equipment's gonna be right here. I know that airway tubes are gonna be right there in both ambulances. So, you know, we, we had ambulances where this cabinet had IV stuff in this ambulance, but the IV stuff was in this cabinet yeah, on the other truck. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's uniformity. I, you, know, you never done on me until just now that it's important that you know where stuff is without going all through every cabinet. Exactly, because yeah. if I had to whip through 600 packages oh, to yeah. get to what I need. Yeah, because you guys, what you guys are doing is critical. Every yep. second counts. Am I right? It is. Yeah. Every second counts. Uh, you, you shouldn't sit down in my presence, Tom. It's uh, No, you can oh, okay. sit down. Well, no, I'm, I'm trying to get out of the way because I want to show them something. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. I started to show you the radio over here. Yeah. And what this radio is, and I, I may have mentioned, this allows us to talk to the doctor. Besides, you can put the headset on now. See? Go this, ahead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what this does is this allows us to talk to the hospital. I just I'll give you a little slack there. This allows us to talk to the hospital, to the different hospitals we go to. And sometimes we'll talk to a doctor um, to get specific medication orders that we want. And others it may be to consult what hospital we're going to go to. Our normal hospitals we go to in this area is the Milton, the Good Samaritan in Brockton, the Brockton Hospital, um, the Kearney, the Quincy, and the South Shore. Those are our primary hospitals. Can the patient request the hospital? Absolutely. They if it's, can. If it's within one of those hospitals, right. we, we tend to go to the hospital they request. If they ask to go to the Newton Wellesley or the Norwood um, or the Leahy, that's a little far for us to go. How about Mass General? Would you, you that tends to be a little far. Okay. However, if someone's been hit by a car and is critical and needs a trauma center, we may take them to the Boston Medical Center. Right. If they have burns, we may take them to the Mass General, who, who's affiliation with the Shrines. Um, if, if, if they have a long-standing uh, OB problem for, for you know, delivery of children, we may go to the Brigham Women's of the Beth Israel. So it's dependent. We have primary hospitals we go to, but it's dependent on um, their request and, and the specifics of the individual case. Who decides that a very bad accident, it's whether a helicopter is needed? 
usually the field personnel. It, you know, the, the EMTs, the paramedics on the ambulance will consult with the officer in charge of the scene and, and they'll decide back and forth if, if a helicopter is appropriate. We're pretty close to Boston. Our transport time to Boston is, is 12 to 16 minutes. Wow. Um, Whoa, wow. On, on off traffic hours. Yeah. And by the time you establish a, a landing zone and get the helicopter and transfer care and have them fly and land, yeah. we can pretty much have the patient into a trauma center yeah. by the time. So Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, and it keeps the, the helicopter available for, for other municipalities that may need it that, that aren't as close as we are. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. I tell you, this is absolutely incredible. When, I, when they said we were going to do the show, I said, what can you say about an ambulance? And I said, wow. What can, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, there's a lot more um, than you realize in ambulances yeah, really, nowadays. Really. That's unbelievable. I'm so proud of our public safety guys. Yeah. I'll Let me give you a hand, please. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're very I, welcome. I needed that. Yes. I needed that. Okay, I see the boat up here. Could you tell me a little bit about the boat? Yeah. I love it. The, the boat is a new piece of equipment we got through a grant uh, to replace a boat that I think was purchased in 1955. Oh, wow. Uh, a <laughs> little older than me. A little older than you, too, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And this is a, a new boat that we got through the grant, like I said. Um, that has actually some row, row, um, oars on it to row, but it also has an uh, electric motor on the back of it. Uh, before you go into the reservoir or, or for a rescue, it's environmentally friendly. There won't be a gas leak uh, off. Yeah. Can you imagine a gas leak off a fireboat trying to rescue someone? <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's all environmentally friendly. We have the uh, new rescue type buoys and life preservers and, and throw uh, ropes and so forth. Uh, to help whoever needs. Wow, that's really fantastic. It's on a trailer ready it's to go. It's on a trailer ready to go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have a pickup truck that we can hook up and, and be out in no time. That's a fantastic boat. I'd like to have one of those at home. Well, thank you. Well, I wonder what something like that would cost. Ah, don't even answer. Hey, I don't Trump, know. thank you so much. Ken, thank you very much. Great show. You did a great job. Well, thank I think you. the people at home learned a lot. I know I did. I hope so. We'll be seeing you again. Hope so. Come back anytime. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, Tom. Oh, that was a great show, and I want to thank, I'm standing here with Chief Foley, Chief Foley. And how are you? Thank you, I'm fine. Thank you so much for giving me, Tom, to go to, for the co-host today. It was just fantastic. He's so knowledgeable. Now, have you got anything that you'd like to say to the people of the town of Randolph? First of all, I'd like to thank you, Ken, for coming here today to see what we do as far as emergency medical service response is. It's one of the facets of the fire department that's been around since the early 50s. The fire department took over EMS here for the town. And as you have found out today, it's grown considerably, oh, immeasurably. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. And we're very proud of the uh, product that we present to the taxpayers. I'd like to thank them at this time for their funding, for their continued support. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Tom mentioned when he spoke to you earlier today a little bit about the growth of the town and the need to put an ambulance at the North Randolph Fire Station. Oh, you don't have an ambulance there? No, no, that. we okay. run both ambulances out of headquarters. Okay. And we take people off the ladder truck and the engine at headquarters to staff the second ambulance. Wow. Um, we would be looking, hopefully, to get the manpower necessary so that we could put in a, the second ambulance housed in the North Randolph Station, therefore, decreasing the response time yeah, to well, the people. See, it seemed to me that with the influx of a lot of people coming into Randolph, right. Randolph certainly needs that. We do a significant amount of runs in that end of town, do the high occupancy places such as Lombardo's, Lantana, the yeah. Holiday Inn. Yeah. We respond many times during the course of a week to Route 93, Route 24. Uh, North Randolph has become dynamically totally different than it was when it was built back in 1951. Oh yeah, I can imagine it has because sure. of all the people that are moving Growth in. Growth and uh, the influx of people into the town. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I'd like to, again, thank the people for their support of the fire department and hope for their continued support. Those thank are you good. and Randolph Cable TV for being here today and looking at our EMS product. Um, I hope someday you'll have the opportunity to come back and visit us again when we'll talk about other things that we do, such as hazardous material, ice and water rescue, oh, man. I structural look firefighting. We have a lot of things things we do here besides firefighting so yes, yes. Uh, I, know I appreciate that. your time and well, I thank you for being here today we with appreciate us. you inviting us thank down you. here you're always welcome yeah. this is the this is the citizens fire department absolutely belongs to the tax absolutely we're absolutely. here to do what we can to help them and we uh, appreciate the support okay thank you very much thanks Ken Chief Foley can't thank you enough thank you Ken. talk to you Take again bye-bye another segment of wandering Randolph has been accomplished 
We've been an in and out of the Randolph Fire Department today. It's been a very hot day, but a very interesting day. I thought that Tom did an excellent job of explaining all the equipment in that ambulance. You can rest easy. Hopefully, you'll never need the ambulance. But if you do, I think you can rest easy that they can well take care of you. Okay, this is all brought to you by RCTV channels 8, 10, and 22. Tune them in. They're a wonderful bunch of people. You're going to like what you see. You're going to see what you like. Until next time, I'm Ken Simmons. We'll be talking to you again.